Back to this breaking news. The Washington Post reports that U.S. authorities have charged the NSA leaker Edward Snowden with espionage. The Guardian newspaper columnist who broke the leak story, Glenn Greenwald, joins us now on the phone. Also with us, CNN senior international correspondent uh, Nick Robertson, who's in Hong Kong. Glenn, I want to start with you. Uh, the charges are, according to the Washington Post, espionage, uh, theft, and conversion of government property. You on Twitter uh, are referring to this as overcharging. Uh, I suppose uh, I should ask you what you think he should be charged with, if anything. I'm not sure he should be charged with anything at all. What he has done is a, an immense public service, an act of real patriotism, to inform his fellow citizens about things the government has been doing of great consequence in the dark and has triggered a debate that Barack Obama himself says that he welcomes. And I think the key context here is that in all of human history, all of American history before Barack Obama, a total of three whistleblowers, three, have been accused under espionage statutes. And since Barack Obama took office, this is now the seventh such case, more than double the number of all previous presidents combined. And I think that really illustrates how vindictive this president is, how much uh, acrimony he has towards any kind of transparency, even though he ran on a platform of bringing more transparency than any president in history. Well, the government response would be, uh, and since the Obama administration would not give us a, someone to talk, I'll, I'll try to guess what he, they would say, which is, uh, that he he uh, he was an official who was a uh, contractor and before that he a government employee who knew uh, the top secret documents were not allowed to come to light uh, and this is not a surprise and uh, in the view of the government uh, this has made it easier for America's foes some of whom are terrorists and mean the U.S. harm uh, to evade our detection how would you respond to that? When Barack Obama ran for president in 2008, what he told the American people in an effort to get them to vote for him was that he considered whistleblowing to be among the most noble and patriotic acts one can commit and that we need more protections for them, not persecution the way that the Bush administration was doing, he said. This is, there is zero evidence or any kind of information that has been disclosed as a result of Snowden's leaks that has remotely harmed national security. What this has done is it has opened the eyes of the American people and people around the world to the fact that there is this massive spying apparatus being built. And the duty of somebody in government, when they see something going on that's wrong in secret, is to come forward and blow the whistle. That's why Americans consider Daniel Ellsberg a hero, and it's exactly what Edward Snowden did here. I want to get to Nick Robertson in a second, but Glenn, just because you bring up Daniel Ellsberg, Daniel Ellsberg leaked the Pentagon Papers and then he stayed in the United States. Edward Snowden, as far as we know, is in Hong Kong. Right. I was just on the tele I was just on CNN several nights ago with Daniel Ellsberg, and, and he was asked uh, by Piers Morgan, um, do you think that it was wrong for Edward Snowden to leave the country and not stay? And, and Ellsberg said, no, it's a completely different country. If you're a whistleblower, you are now guaranteed persecution. He's a 29-year-old who knows that if he engages in whistleblowing, he will be threatened with life in prison. So to demand that he stay in a country with the record of persecuting whistleblowers that this country has is unreasonable in the extreme. He wants to be part of the ongoing global debate, not stuffed up into a cage somewhere. And he wants his, his freedom because he believes he did nothing wrong and knows the United States won't provide that. Nick Robertson in Hong Kong, you've spoken to an individual uh, who is part of the WikiLeaks organization uh, about uh, his attempt to provide an escape for Edward Snowden uh, from Hong Kong uh, if he can get all his plans together. Tell us more about that. Well, this plan has uh, several parts to it, we're told. We're not told the details of, of all of them or, or the specifics of, 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 of any of them, but several different plans to get him out of Hong Kong and to get him to Iceland. But they rely on the fact that Icelandic authorities would grant him asylum and citizenship if he was on their soil. And that hasn't been green-lighted at the moment. But one of these plans would have been to fly Edward Snowden on a private business charter jet from Hong Kong at the cost of between 400 and 500,000 uh, US dollars to fly him all the way to Iceland. But this, this is something that hasn't gotten off the ground yet. Just picking up on what Glenn is talking about, the point of persecution, um, of course, these, these charges now uh, do set in motion a legal process here 
here in Hong Kong. The chief executive must now look at those charges and decide whether or not to uh, pass them to the court to issue an arrest warrant. The, all the indications are that he probably would. But the way that the way that Edward Snowden can respond to these charges is is in one of the ways that, that Glenn just outlined, and that is persecution, political persecution, claim asylum, non-refoulement, non-return, as it's known here, um, on the basis of persecution, or he could do it on the basis that if he went back he would be tortured, or on the basis that he would be uh, subject to cruel and inhumane uh, treatment if he went back to the United States. But this political persecution, listening to Glenn, sounds like the avenue that uh, Edward Snowden might be trying to pursue here. All right, Nick Robertson in Hong Kong and Glenn Greenwald on the phone. Thank you both so much for joining us at Last Minute. Coming up.